now the paper or the paint has dried and um, I'm going to do the rocks and the rocks are going to be they're basically grey but this is one of the important points if we did just a, a grey mix of blue and red it it might look a bit boring so one of the fun things we can do is mix these colors somewhat on the paper and I'll show you what I mean by that now so there's my purple but then I could do like a pure blue here so this is what I mean now I'm not sure how this is going to look because the yellow ochre underneath is quite strong oh look that's even bluer there and so it it probably is affecting the look of this if it had been done on pure white paper it might look a bit different so So what I want to do here is just this is where the greenery is going to be. So what I want to do if possible is just get strong changes in colour. I want to make basically colourful rocks but if I make it too colourful it's, it's not going to look natural. So it, it is trying to find that, that right balance, not just grey, but a mix of red and blues. And it's amazing how much variety, and purple of course, how much variety you can get. I guess we're never going to have a pure red that would just look too artificial but sometimes we've got almost a pure blue and then sometimes more of a watery blue yeah and I'm, I'm quite happy with this as you can see it looks exciting and it and it may look at this moment like too much like too um, too purple, too blue, but what you have to remember is as it dries it's going to change. Uh, it's going to become a bit fainter um, and um, a bit more subtle so don't worry too much you're more likely to underdo it rather than overdo it. And I need just to paint around her face without actually painting her face. Yeah. There we go. So I might want to do a little bit of a strong blue here and that will really come out as the paint dries. So that's why I'm doing that. When you put down these pure colours later on as the paint dries these can really start to come out. I probably shouldn't use this red, but it's, it's just a bit of an experiment to see what happens. And I think um, maybe a little around here and then a bit of pure blue. Here. Yeah looking quite interesting you can see here before that was a quite 
clearly red and this was quite clearly blue but as it um, faded or dried it's become far more subtle and so it really is important to to go a bit a, a bit too strong I think rather than weak because it can just or subtle because it can just disappear so quickly and then I'm going to spray it and hopefully get some texture so let's leave that to dry now I'm going to do the uh, trees above the rocks and then when I add the shadows to the trees which is going to be wet and wet I'm going to come down with the darks that I'm using for the shadows in the trees and use the same dark mix for the cracks in the rocks so we'll see how well that works out so I'm using my hate brush oh, it's a bit dirty but I'm gonna mix some blue into this okay that's a bit of a weak green and then some yellow ochre variety and then a bit more that's too blue but what I'm going to do is mix some yellow ochre into it there we go and I should spray this because it's drying very quickly okay and then some yellow there we go yeah it's looking quite good and then what I'm going to do next is a bit of splatter so um, get my bamboo brush get some of this and just basically splatter okay and a little bit more here and I think that's looking good and then I need to make um, a thick mix and needs to be purple mix well maybe not purple maybe a bit more gray so it's going to be all three colors so let's add a bit of red here some water and then some yellow ochre and gradually we're going to get the color we want we don't I don't mix all of it so it's yeah I think that will do okay so um, although I want to do shadows in here I think it needs to dry a little bit more so what I'm going to do is my shadows in my rocks oh well actually this is supposed to be a shadow in the rock didn't realize that but there we go and another shadow there another shadow there and there okay
Okay. And here. Okay, and maybe I can add a little bit of shadow there. So yeah, I'm going to get my bamboo brush now and I'm going to start adding my shadow now to this shrubbery and um, you do have to be careful. There's a tendency to paint too much, to overdo. <laughs> Which uh, I've often done. It's very easy to do. Um, so around here, Got a little bit of a gap there. And there's these lovely cracks in the rock. And that's what will really, hopefully, make the difference. These cracks will really make the, make it start to look like it's rock. We will see. Mm -hmm. think it's beginning to come together too much shade there yeah but there you go just keep on and fingers crossed hope it works okay Don't want those little white gaps above the rocks. Okay, so just keep going. And the important point is not to overdo it. I may end up overdoing it, but I'm going to try not to. Yeah, that doesn't look very natural, but there you go. <laughs> ah, maybe it will work. Maybe. Maybe if I make it a bit bigger just here. And then this crack bit wider here. One problem is, is I've made these cracks the same kind of size the whole way along and normally they vary and so it's important to show that yeah it's quite complicated 
that's why sometimes it's so difficult because you don't really want to trace it exactly you just want to suggest it and simplify it so you really have to look carefully oops didn't want that let's try and hide it okay maybe that will do um, and then here let's have a big mark like that it's not quite like this actually but maybe we can make it up yeah fudging again <laughs> it's like it seems to be the one major lesson I'm teaching people is to fudge things it wasn't my intention okay I think let's just spray that that's actually not bad and can you see how now those differences the red the yellow the blue the purple how much more subtle it's become and interesting I mean you might think it's still a bit too much and I can see that but I think it's acceptable okay so just need to check everything oh and then there's one more technique to show you <laughs> which is a lot of fun just change this a bit yeah so I'm really messing around with this and changing it to make it look more exciting so I recommend you do the same if you can it, it's one of those things where hopefully the more you practice the better you get I think I've got better at painting rocks but the thing is of course there are different kinds of rocks and so you know um, you might get good at painting rocks like this but then when you're painting different kinds of rocks like boulders and stuff like that on a mountain sometimes it's it's a bit different can be a can be quite a bit different yeah I think I think that looks okay I think that was my my mistake there but it's not that bad I probably overcomplicated it oh didn't want to do that I'll get rid of that so you can get rid of stuff like that <laughs> and then oh also this this would look better I think if I made this a big wide crack like that hmm yeah and that that line was just a bit it's a bit too nice okay okay so the last thing keep saying that and then I keep doing a bit more I will get to the last thing but it might be a bit 
too late. So this is what the last thing is supposed to be. It's supposed to be about scraping out with your fingernail and we don't really even need to do that but it's a good thing to practice for future like that. So you really don't have to do it. If you feel happy with your painting then then that'll do. But it is a good technique and sometimes it can look really really fantastic. So the more you practice it the better you get. disappeared quite a bit. Mm, and I think that helped. I think that added. Sometimes it looks really really powerful and works really really well. On this occasion it's added a bit, not tremendously but a bit. Okay, so I think one more spray and leave it to dry.